Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Caravan of Garbage, where we go, can we find the longest movie in the world to talk about? I think we have success. We might have, absolutely, because this is King Kong 20, 2000, 2000, 2005. 2005, baby. <laughs> so I hadn't seen this in cinemas. Uh, what about you? What was your experience with this? I, if you'd asked me a week ago if I'd seen this movie at all, I would have said yes. <laughs> but what I think happened is that I have seen this... In snippets, yep. you know, over a span of time. Because, you know, sometimes you'll turn on the TV sure. and it's uh, Naomi Watts is a struggling actress. She's trying to make it in Depression Era New York. And then, like, a year later, you turn on the TV and there's a bunch of people in Skull Island. And you're like, is this the same showing of this movie? It's one of these Mulholland Drive. <laughs> could, could very well be. But I think I've seen snippets of this movie yeah. and sort of pieced it together because I've seen the original. And I'm just like, well, I must have seen yeah. this movie. It was a big movie. It's a big movie. It was the biggest movie of all time at the time, budget Wise, two hundred and seven million. Is this off the back? Entirely pay off, but ah, is this off the back of Peter Jackson being the biggest filmmaker in the world for for a for a a time, a significant time? So yeah, leave a like if you could for Peter Jackson, if anything, because he is a visionary filmmaker. I'm a big fan of his work. Pour one out for PJ. All right. (laughs) So yeah, he was pretty much given free reign off the Lord of the Rings trilogy. He'd won like multiple Academy Awards. There were a huge box office success, and they're wonderful movies. I don't know whether we'll ever cover them on this. Probably, but they're great. So my question. Question, I guess to you is you might know the answer to this was this his passion project yes so he was like I want to do yep. a remake of the I guess the 1933 King Kong hence why it's set in 1933 but yes so he was paid 20 million up front for this movie which was the most ever for a director at the time uh, he owns props from the original he's a huge fan like you said this is also like an obvious homage to that original movie and you can see it in things like the dinosaurs are more kind of crocodilian, which is how they yeah, kind of right. thought they were in the 30s. The jungle is also built the way that the original jungle was, except it's imagined like, oh, we've got new cameras. So this is what it looks like, you know, with, with some HD I 2005 sh- cameras. This is what it lo- would look like if all the, the film was stored on a jazz drive. <laughs> That's right, exactly. Which I believe uh, is an underappreciated uh, storage medium for its time, Mason. I can't believe he stole my bit. (laughs) But the thing is, though, he wanted to make this after The Frighteners, which I don't know if you've seen, is kind of like a wonderful little horror comedy. I have seen The Frighteners. Yeah, it's really great. Uh, But off the back of Mighty Joe Young coming out, and then there was a really terrible Godzilla movie, which we've also talked about, it wasn't really a good time to do it. But what is incredible about this is, it's an incredible turnaround considering the Return of the King came out like two years earlier. Like, it's amazing they put this together oh, in sure, yeah. such a short amount of time. I know people talk about, like, The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings in terms of a lot of work done in a short space of time, but this would kill, like, making this would kill a man, surely. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. Here's the thing, though. A common complaint of this movie is, well, there's a few, uh, that it takes a long time to get going because that boat sequence at the start, you know, and we're mm-hmm. in New York before that... It's, it, God, it really drags its feet, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Just a cast of colourful characters I don't give a shit about. You uh, know? Look, I'm sure that we are not the first to point this out, but boy, howdy, is it? Mm. It's a long movie. It's a four act movie. Three hours and 21 minutes. Real long. Because Real it, long. Because, uh, you know, to skip ahead slightly to nearly the end, <laughs> but not nearly the end at all, uh, if, if I'd never seen this movie before, which I hadn't, but I do know the story of the movie, but if I'd gone in completely you know, uh, clean and not known anything about this movie, I would have gone, oh, okay, well, she's befriended the big gorilla Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and now everybody's in a jam with the big insects and whatever. Yep. And then they're going to escape to the boat and then because King Kong has established his friendship with with Naomi Watts' character, he's going to maybe hold off the insects while they leave and he's going to die a noble death and that'll be the end of the movie. Yeah, that makes sense, doesn't it? But then then there's another movie after that. There's a a movie at the start, there's a movie in the middle, (laughs) which I think is the best movie, and then a movie at the end, which has some ice skating in it as well. Sure does, yeah. Yeah. But the experience success of this movie it's it's insane because for example you know that boat which is a largely inconsequential section of the film they had a real life boat that they used Uh they had a miniature yes and they had a replica for filming like interior shots and you know when they're splashing a bunch of waves on and stuff like that Uh so you can see where the budget went but at the same time 
there's not really that many interesting people in this in the way that Lord of the Rings is. Lord of the Rings is a colourful cast of characters and you get to know everybody and they have their individual motivations, you know, and, and there's deaths and tragedy and triumph and all that. But here I'm like, ah, uh, Jack Driscoll, okay, you're, you're writing and, <laughs> okay, Jack Black, you love movies. That's Actually, I do enjoy Jack Black at this, to be fair. But I guess the only thing that really works for me here character-wise is like Naomi Watts and King Kong. Everything else can go in the bin here. Oh no! Look, it's the, it's uh, Jamie Bell. I hope he, hope he is, I, I don't care. <laughs> hope he finishes that book that he likes. <laughs> that is largely regarding the stuff that he's doing on his in his own boat. You know what it feels like if yes. I'm going to use a term from Lord of the Rings. Wait, it feels like a real Silmarillion of a movie. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's a real desolation of Smaug in terms of me sitting there going. Oh my god, this goes forever! No, uh, it feels like in terms of like situations and characters, it feels like it's stretched thin like butter over too much bread. And ah. when Bilbo Baggins said that, he's like, this ring's fucking me up, mate. I don't yeah. like it. Would you say that this movie is too many elevenses and not enough? <laughs> Um, second breakfasts? Se- second breakfasts, <laughs> yes. I actually I actually quite liked all the stuff on the boat. Honestly, I could take or leave the big monkey stuff. Really? Yeah. Okay. I know it's not a monkey. It doesn't have a tail. No. And I, well, we could talk about King Kong and, and, and I and do. we could talk about the differences between various primates. <laughs> sure. But the thing is... I, I like the chef. <laughs> I like the first mate. Yeah, I like the chef of the first mate, I guess. But the thing is, I think it gets better as more people get killed. Because oh, it's like, okay, okay so there's less people to focus on. But let's talk about Kong, because Andy Serkis plays two roles in this. Chef. A guy, yeah, a chef, who has he has one eye, or maybe he's just squinting. I, I, don't, I don't know what he's doing. And he also, of course... <laughs> I got lemon juice in it. <laughs> and also, of course, he plays King Kong. And what I think is interesting about this King Kong design is... What I think is interesting is mm. the quick changes that he's always doing in between <laughs> scenes. Do you see that? How does he do you it? You didn't see it, because he's so good at he's it. He's such a good actor and mocap performer. He does the cowboy switch, and then he jumps out. He's in the gorilla suit. <laughs> You don't even notice. <laughs> but the thing is, traditionally, and we've seen this more with the modern King Kong also, he's more kind of standy uppy, mm-hmm. kind of like, you know, like a guy in a suit. Yes. And for this, they went, he's more gorilla, or monkey, if mm-hmm. you will. Mm-hmm. Like, no, he's more gorilla than he is that. He's more animalistic yeah. in, in a lot of ways, which I think uh, is an interesting take on it, honestly. And I think also it's an incredible mocap performance and a beautiful looking gorilla it captures like sadness and pain and joy and cruelty and cruelty he's, he's a mean he's a mean monkey and i didn't like him <laughs> i liked him of course he's mean though everybody's dead he's not his own dinosaurs are always snapping at him I mean, don't 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 push over the lady that's trying to be nice to you he's never seen a lady i guess that's probably true actually you've seen a lot of ladies because there's ladies living on that island isn't yeah. there yeah yeah and he's probably probably eaten a lot of ladies too <laughs> no doubt has no that being said uh, andy circus pushed for this uh, King Kong in this is a vegetarian, because ah. like a lot of gorillas are. But also a lot of animals in the wild that are vegetarian will also just eat anything. If like they if you handed the them a Big Mac, they <laughs> yeah. would eat that Big Mac. Exactly. So there's a lot of this that I think looks really great a lot mm-hmm. of the time. I mean, there's remarkable recreations of New York and jungle settings, especially considering that all of this is shot in New Zealand, you know, on sound stages mm-hmm. and with some outdoor sequences. But there are other moments where you do kind of feel like, Oh, yeah, they only had kind of two years to put this together. For example, the dinosaur stampede is... It's pretty ropey. It is a little, yeah. And, and yeah. Yeah, that, that scene, the scene where uh, Kong escapes in uh, in the theatre, mm. that is... Uh, you, can, you, can see, you can see the little line around yes. him. And I thought we'd reach the era where you couldn't see the little line around <laughs> things. Yeah, it felt to me like, you know that jungle chase sequence from Indiana Jones 4? Do you remember that? Like yep. that kind of vibe. Like maybe if you, they just darkened everything down, you wouldn't see, you know, I don't know anything about special effects. Maybe that would have helped. But that being said, that being said, let me say this. Go on. Allow me to step forward with this point. I'm listening. Uh, the Kong versus T-Rex fight or V-Rex because they're a different kind of evolution of a ah, dinosauric creature. This is the very Rex. That's right. <laughs> so I think that brawl's remarkable. And also uh, the bit that I think everybody's seen, probably you even, because you could just watch it on YouTube. Mm-hmm. I love the way that it, it starts and then it escalates. It's like a pub brawl that, that gets out of control and more mates jump in and you spiral out a window and you're tumbling down a thing and you're, just, you're still fighting and biting and it's all going on. It turns into a big cloud of dust and people <laughs> are being brought into the cloud of dust. Exactly. Your whole experience of uh, bar brawls is from the comic strip Andy Cap, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is. And the absolutely. wife is brought in and she's swinging a rolling pin. Got a rolling pin, exactly. But also in that sequence you see there's some wonky-like holding Naomi Watts stuff going on. Mm -hmm. And there's a bit of that in this movie in general. But the fact that they 
made that entire sequence in broad daylight and it looks so good. It's very bold and it's very well paced. The Corrie's incredible is what I'm saying. <laughs> you know, even when they're swinging on the vine and I love the bit at the end where he, he kills, I think, the, the final very Rex. By ripping its jaw off. And then he goes, yap, yap, yap. He kind of like <laughs> does a little like puppeteery thing. Be like, is this dead? Yap, yap, yap. Yeah, this is dead. Also, this is- I um, thought I was very Rex, <laughs> but I was no Rex at all. <laughs> <laughs> also, it's in a lot of ways a horror film, which kind of calls back to a lot of Peter Jackson's mm. earlier work. Some it, of it's very grotesque. But also, The insect stuff, especially, I yeah, thought, yucko. Definitely. But it's also weirdly bloodless at times. There's a moment when one of the natives gets shot. Mm -hmm. and there's no squibs or bullet holes in them at all. But yeah, like you mentioned, the bug pit scene, which also, by the way, is just them just swatting wildly. Peter Jackson just said, just swat wildly uh -huh. and we'll just put everything in. And, right. and it totally works and it's creepy and mm -hmm. awful. I mean, there is a scene where Jamie Bell swats away a bunch of big bugs with a machine gun. With his eyes closed. <laughs> Oh, Jamie Bell, what are you doing? Uh, what are you, he was in Tintin. As Tintin? The titular he Tintin? He was the titular Tintin. Do you remember the bit where Jamie Bell's running on the edge of the cliff? Yep. And then the cliff's falling down. He's doing like a weird Muppet run to yeah. make it happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Real Looney Tunes vibes. That's right. But the bug pit scene, though, it's actually a homage to a deleted and missing scene from the original Kong movie. Right, because mm. the, the old one, because it was released in the 1930s, it would have been released before the Hays Code or the censorship rules were mm. put in place. So I think over the years, mm. every time it got a new release, somebody was like, I find this questionable, let's take Quite it out. spooky, yeah. So apparently, yeah, it did. It sent audiences screaming from theatres. And whenever I hear that, I'm like... I don't think anybody left. I don't, I, don't think, I don't think anybody went, oh, this black and white image I'm seeing, it's, uh, it's too visceral. I real. paid my 25 cents. I'm going to sit here and poop in my seat like a gentleman. <laughs> but yeah, you're right. And I think that that, that makes sense yeah. that he would want to do justice to everything that was in it before. Yes. Which is why it's so long. Yeah. And speaking of, that bug scene, the original, uh -huh. they recreated it using methods from the 1930s. And you can see that. So it's a scene that you could slot back into that original original King Kong film that they just made on the side of this as like a DVD bonus extra. Ah. So there you go. Also, there I go. There you go. Also, the bonus extras on this film is actually shorter than the movie itself, which is like, that says something, doesn't it? <laughs> really that does. really says something. Okay, let's talk about New York. Um, I reckon, right? Go on. Because they take him back to, to New York City after mm -hmm. chloroforming him right in the schnoz. <laughs> and he's all tied up and yep. they're like, look at this gorilla. And everyone's like, very good. We love this because we, we, we've never seen anything and we love this. I reckon if you went back to the 1930s, you could make a big stuffed gorilla and put like a broom behind its head mm -hmm. and Go just on. like wiggle it about and just be like yeah this is a this is a giant gorilla and people will be like probably i think you could go back in time to the 30s and just wiggle a broom about and people <laughs> would be like that's not what that's for <laughs> this man's insane <laughs> i'm gonna sit here and poop my pants i paid 25 cents for this but i i know the uh the theater scene is a bit wonky at times but there is something about seeing a giant monkey which mm -hmm. is what he is, we've established. That's right. People are flippant, people aren't liking that. They know we're joking, but they also don't like it. I think that's I think that's good, and I think the rampage through New York is, you know, it's it's a little bit of fun. Mm -hmm. The ice skating slows it down a bit. But then, of course, we get to the uh, the iconic climb up a building, get shot off a building, fall off a building. Right. <laughs> that's right, yeah. How do, you, how do you feel about this? I was checked out by this point. Yeah, I know. Like, I watched it, but... And yeah. I know how it goes. Yeah. Uh... And it wasn't Beauty Twas Killed the Beast. It was those <laughs> machine guns. We all know. Or it was Jack Black who hit him in the schnoz with a bottle of chloroform and dragged him to New York. He's trying to avoid a lawsuit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, we all agree. Everybody here agrees that this was actually a woman's fault. That's right, that one specifically. <laughs> you all saw her. She was up there. <laughs> she pushed him. <laughs> Probably uh, hit, her, hit him with, his, with her handbag. Yeah, so that's kind of crazy, isn't it? But that's, of course, a homage to... The original movie. Yes. And originally they were going to get Fay Ray back to do that line. Or just to wander up and be like... Yeah, which is kind of strange, I heard right? Beauty Killed the Beast. Yeah. Specifically that woman. Get her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess. I mean, you know, it, it's a homage, so I, I can understand yeah. well, it. Well, she is referenced earlier in the movie. Yes, yeah, she is. At yeah. one point, uh, 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 Jack Black's character is like, we should get Faye, mm. presumably Fay Ray, but she's doing a picture with Radio Pictures, which was RKO, which is the studio that made... King Kong original King exactly. Kong. Exactly. Oh. Yeah. Do you Does that mean they were made they were already making a King Kong movie? <laughs> In the during this movie, maybe the King Kong movie that came out was based on this real world event. Whoa! Do you think that's entirely possible? Yeah, yeah, they did a found footage style. <laughs> Do it's you called Clover Monkey? Oh. Go on. 
Monkey Field? Monkey, yeah, yep. either of those is fine. We'll get some posters made up, uh, Weekly Planet posters, if you could. <laughs> check, check him out on Twitter and Instagram. He's doing great work. Right. Yeah. Do you want to do some trivia? Yeah, of course I do. Trivia here, yeah. yeah. It's, it's called Low Key Trivia. Oh. Just a bit of trivia. Well, not really? Monkey Trivia. But we say it real Mon- soft. Monkey Trivia, here we oh, go. Okay. We're, changing, we're changing it up. Bow, bow, bow. <laughs> <laughs> Low Key Monkey Trivia. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it took 18 months to craft the CGI version of the Empire State Building, but the real building was uh, built in 14 months. Could wow. have just built a real one. Built a real one, right? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So I don't know if you saw this also, there was a bunch of production diaries that were released uh, in the ma- during the making of. I did not see this. Some before, some after. And there was one on April Fool's Day, which talked about a sequel to this, where they put a lot of rough animations together and got the actors involved to say, we're making Son of Kong, the movie. <laughs> and they went well out of their way to kind of make this thing happen. And it's it's fairly convincing, if, if you didn't know. Yeah. I mean, not now. You've spoiled it for me. I have, haven't I? Yeah. You should have. April Fool, Mason, you I got, got you. You got me. That's true. You didn't get me. Yeah. <laughs> How about this one? Uh, Jack Black wore no makeup in this movie, off the back of a rumour that Clint Eastwood never wore makeup. It's, which also isn't true. It's a rumor. Uh huh. Um, and but he's wearing a wig. Jack Black's wearing a wig. But I don't know what. I love Jack Black. I just don't. I don't. I don't know. You know what I loved in this? I love Kyle Chandler as the um, yeah the 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 nineteen thirties Hollywood big wig star. Mm. I thought I thought it was great. Just the perfect mix of ego and even more ego. That's right. I, I loved it. Um, and, he, and he pops up in the Godzilla monkey verse. He's doesn't in he? both continuities. Isn't that wild? How does he do it? And it's also an interesting uh, look into how uh, people view Hollywood looks mm. because in the original he's a Hollywood you know he's he's a Hollywood star playing a Hollywood star and in the new ones he's a Hollywood star playing some sort of financial comptroller of some kind, <laughs> but a handsome one. He's very handsome, isn't he? He's every but he's dad, that guy, isn't he? Very true. Uh, the bit where he's got the comb and he's pretending it's a mustache. I enjoyed that. Right? If there was one bit that I would keep from this movie, just one, and I scrapped the rest, I would put <laughs> that scene in. <laughs> and maybe the bit where he goes, yap, 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 yap. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Uh, last bit of trivia. Monkey, monkey, tri- what, what, what are we doing? What is this? Loki monkey trivia! <laughs> uh, Rick Baker, special effects and creature designer. Uh-huh. He played King Kong in the 1976 remake and is one of the pilots to shoot down King Kong in the 2005 version, meaning that he both played and killed King Kong. So, Whoa. awesome. Well, well done. That's pretty cool. It's very cool. I think I so. I when everything comes together like that. Me too. Rick Baker, what a legend. Uh, anyways, look, Caravan of Garbage happens here every week, doesn't it? That's exactly right. But some right. weeks we're like, what are we, we going to do? Tomorrow? We mentioned how long this is, and you know, recently the Justice League movie came out. A lot of people are saying, do the new Justice League movie, but I feel like we need a bit of space between now and then. Mm. We do have a podcast episode on it, don't we? That's exactly we right. We talk about that very thing, but we kind of want to see you know, the future of this before we start you know, unraveling that movie, if you will. But... In regards to what's coming next week, here's oh, yes. a hint. Anyways, though, yeah, look, as I said, we do this every week, but they actually go up early on bigsandwich.co. That's right. Along with a bunch of other stuff. If you do want to sign up, there's bonus podcasts. There's movie commentaries. That's right. What else we got there, Mason? There's an ad-free feed of our regular podcast. That's right. The, the regular planet. podcast has ads in it. So, yeah, uh, you can check that out if you want. helps us out in a big way. But, really... Thanks for watching this video. You're very welcome. And thanks for Ben for watching this movie, which I know that he loved. <laughs> he loved it. And Ben reaction shot. Here we go. He's loving it. Look. Look, look at him. Loving it. Look, he's, he's loving it. Oh, my God. He's doing a cartwheel. <laughs> ben, that's really impressive. That perfect cartwheel you did. All right, guys. Uh, we'll see you next week. Let us know what you want to see. And, yeah, we'll do, we're doing the Mortal Kombat movies, all right? They're oh, coming yeah, nice. up, all right? Nice. All right? Yeah. All right, you happy? Yeah, yeah, I really am. <laughs> okay, grab that jammy, guys. We'll see you next week. Goodbye.